one of the absolute first things you should do when modifying your truck, SUV, or any kind of vehicle for off-road is lighting. We all know off-roading doesn't happen just during the day. Factory lighting is absolutely terrible on almost every off-road vehicle offered, especially older ones. Now I modified my headlights myself, cut them open, added HID low beam Morimoto projectors. So there's a dual projector setup, they both come on. That improved lighting exponentially. However, now today it's time to upgrade and add actual more light. As you can see here, we have a light bar to install. So after you've upgraded your headlights, the next thing you're gonna do is, well, add a whole bunch more lights and a nice switch setup to power them. I got all this stuff from Oxbeam, shout out to them for sending this. I got their six position gang switch, which is super nice. Basically, I'll just run this one wire, multi-pin connector through the cab, out to the engine bay, which will connect to this, the whole fuse panel. Six different pieces here to be able to hook up six different sets of lighting. Came with all the stickers, obviously going to be using that one first for this 30 inch light bar that Oxbeam sent as well. This is gonna be mounted in the front slot of the bumper in the ZR2 where a lot of guys mount light bars. It's just, it's just a really clean look. It fits there really well. So let's get started on some wiring. Everyone's favorite. First thing I'm gonna do is figuring out where I'm gonna mount the panel. Generally I like to keep it over here, but I just am not sure that there is enough room. So I just made that whole bracket and then I got to thinking, I don't really like it. so. I'm gonna mount it somewhere else. Right here with some rib nuts. I think that'll be a pretty nice solution. It's gonna sit basically something like that. Wiring still in a good spot. That should work. All right, the fuse panel is mounted. Pretty happy with that. Just two little rivet nuts back in there. Super solid. Wires run out the bottom there and on the side here. Now, I will see these wires when I'm running them out, but just gonna be basically straight down. This will run over to the battery, then ground and accessory. Fuse panel will be done. Pretty straightforward. Just hook it right up to the battery. Cut a little slot in the plastic there so it feeds out real nice. That'll cover all that up. Power and ground all hooked up. So I'm gonna hook it up to the same trigger wire as, as I have my halos and Raptor lights and all that because that's with the key on, so good progress. All right, now my fuse tap, I just plug it into 47, number 47. And these wires just get neatly tucked away inside the fuse panel. Get the cover back on. Get this cover back on. Still gotta run the wire for the control switch panel inside the truck, obviously, but I'm happy with that. Looks pretty nonchalant there. And easy to service. Now this, I'm gonna put in the center console. Way down there, it should fit nicely, but I have to yank some of these switches and stuff out of the way first. And that is the piece that I want. Because this is gonna sit right in between there. Not quite big enough. That's what she said. <laughs> that should do it. Yeah. 
fits in there really nicely. Now that mounting is taken care of, time to take on the fun task of running the wire from the fuse panel under the engine bay all up and to connect to this. I'm not sure where I'm gonna find a spot in the firewall, but I'll figure that out shortly. So what's nice is there's already a hole from the factory right up here. And all I had to do was enlarge it just a hair to get this through. Right there we are. Just gotta run it over the center console. Doesn't get much easier than that. Oh, that's a wrap on the inside. Pretty stoked with that, looks pretty OEM. Interior wiring 100% done. I'll just have to run this to this, but make it clean. You see the little hole actually in there from the factory. That was easy enough. That wire is almost the perfect length. There's just a little extra down in here between the battery and the fender. Not a big deal. See the connection right there. Easy peasy. Fully wired up, time to test it. Now right now, of course, it has no power, as it shouldn't, because it's hooked up to accessory mode only. So you can see here, key off, I can push any of these buttons, and absolutely nothing happens. It's key on. And there it is. Nice. I got the blue color, just to kind of match the OEM colors that we already have in here. Didn't want it to stick out like a sore thumb. All that's left now is to mount and wire the front light bar, which I believe involves removing the bumper again, which will be the like fourth time I've removed the bumper and it's still a pain. Brackets that I needed came in, definitely a complex shape, so it'd be pretty hard to replicate. I thought about making my own, but this is a better bet, especially for 25 bucks for the pair. And I'll link those, the light bar, and the switch setup all in the description box. You guys can pick this stuff up on Amazon, probably eBay too. For now, I'm gonna rip the bumper off, which is not easy on a ZR2 and not fun, but I'll as well get started. All right, brackets are in. They seem pretty solid, and it seems like a nice design. I didn't have to trim any of this air dam here. However, I do believe I have to cut these out. First, I'm gonna do a test fit of the light bar as it sits before I put the bumper on, make sure we don't have any issues. Okay, it seems to fit there really well. However, I feel like it's gonna stick out too far. I want it to be set back in there so it's not as noticeable. Actually, let me just stick the bumper on real quick and see what that looks like. I think it's gonna stick out too far. All right, majority of the hard work's done. Just gonna bolt the bumper all back up. Then I'll install the light bar because you can do that afterwards, thankfully. So a couple of things, bumper's fully back on, bolted on, all that's good to go. I temporarily have the light bar sitting there and I don't like it. I need a curved one. The straight one just doesn't look right. It fits pretty well. It's just the fact like when you look at it like this, you have those edges that stick out because the front fascia is technically curved. I'm going to order a curved one. Wait for that to show up, which for you guys will be like five seconds from now. But all the hard stuff is done. The light bar mounts are on. The bumper is back on. 99% of the wiring is done. I just have to hook up a ground and the positive up to the fuse panel up here. That's it. So see you guys in a few seconds when I get a curved light bar in. single row 
LED curved light bar came in, 30 inch. You can see I went with the single row instead of dual row. It's gonna have less light, but it's gonna fit in that slot way better. Overall, I think it's just gonna look better and it's still gonna give me plenty of light. Time to install it. It's getting dark soon, so we'll be able to test it out really shortly. Light bar is fully wired up. So the wire runs down there, which is where all my other wiring goes for the HIDs and everything associated with the headlights. And again, follows the same path up under here. All zip tied together, got my ground right there. The wires run underneath and there it's connected to my fuse box. So let me do some little final touch-ups here. We'll test it, it's getting dark too. Of course, you guys can't really tell on camera, can you? That looks pretty bright. What do you? What do you think? I'm super pumped with that. It's getting dark, good time to test. But oh boys, I'm super happy with how the entire thing came out. I think the wiring came out really, really nice. The light bar looks really good in there. It doesn't stand out. It doesn't look like it was just slapped on there haphazardly, you know? If you guys are new, another must-have mod, in my opinion, for off-roading lighting-wise is reverse pods. Now, my pods aren't hooked up to my switch panel. They're hooked up to reverse. So anytime I go in reverse, they kick on, and they're super nice. And another thing that I did previously is Extra lighting in the bed. Not necessarily for off-roading, but just anytime you need to use the bed. Just 60 inch LED strips on both sides. Then I did LED bulbs in there, which didn't really do much. These, though, made a huge difference. So there's only one more thing to do in this video, boys, before we end it, and that is to add the light bar sticker to the appropriate switch on my switch panel. Much better. Now I need to use the rest of these so they all have the nice little sticker on them. That's gonna wrap up this video, boys. I do already have more lights on order so I can use more of that nice switch panel and relay harness set up under the hoods. They should be here this week. So hopefully next week or the week after, I will have even more lights on the truck. Thanks for watching, guys. Links to everything I use are in the description. We'll see you next time.